All right, people are fired up for this eclipse. Give yeah. us the historical significance of the 2024 solar eclipse that will take place Monday, I think between like 1 and like 4 o'clock. Do I have that about right? Yeah, you're about right. Really, for Jacksonville, Northeast Florida, Southeast Georgia, you're talking roughly, really it's about 2 to 4 p.m. when you're going to be able to see it with the peak at about 3.05. It is a big deal. Uh, unfortunately, it's not totality in Jacksonville and Northeastern Florida in our, our listening and viewing area, but it'll be about 65% of the sun uh, covered uh, at, at its peak at about 3.05 on, uh, on Monday afternoon. And uh, the last one was just seven years ago, 2017. That one had more of the sun covered in Jacksonville and northeastern Florida. Uh, it was totality from the Pacific Northwest to South Carolina. And Garrett and I ran up there to, uh, with the First Alert Storm Tracker to, uh, to South Carolina to see that in totality. And once I saw it, I was hooked. And it's been a countdown ever since then with my daughter, uh, who went with me then when she was in high school, now a college graduate in Texas. Uh, so the countdown's been on for seven years, and it's an even bigger deal, you guys, because you won't see another solar eclipse locally for 21 years until 2045. Though so that will be a big one for Florida. It's total hey. across the central, southern, and western Florida, almost total in Jacksonville, uh, and it'll be the first total eclipse visible anywhere in Florida since 1970. Pretty good stuff. Wow. So wow. that's why it's a big deal. Okay, I was going to ask, yeah. like, what makes this one so great to see? But now we know. Well, and again, uh, most of the, the midsection of the country – is really where, well, I, I don't know if it's the midsection, but there's a delineation. There's a line yeah. where you can get more of the, the, the whole solar eclipse. Like, I got a buddy from Rhode Island. They are leaving today to go to Pittsburgh. They're going to drive to Cleveland, Ohio, yeah. and they're yeah. going to watch the eclipse on Monday and spend the weekend. And they said there are so many people. Like, I saw a tweet this week, Airbnbs, they, they had them, like, booked for the weekend. Yeah. And they yeah. show, it's like, it's all during this stretch. Apparently, the National Guard will be out in some of these cities because yeah. the crowds are going to be so big, Mike. This is, right. I thought this might be more of a weather geek thing, which I get it from your standpoint. But it's sure. really not. I mean, it's it's a spectacle, I think, for so many. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really, in many cases, a once-in-a-lifetime experience or one of a few in a lifetime. Uh, and it's just so, I, I, it's hard to explain. It's, it's very special spiritual almost not to sound overly uh, dramatic about it but when you sit there in total darkness in the middle of the day and you start to hear crickets chirp and 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 animals behave in a different way um and it's it's a little dot on the earth the surface the surface is earth it's happening from millions of miles away the sun's a long ways away and the moon just happens to go perfectly right in front of it to cast this shadow on a narrow part of the earth uh it's it's tremendous. It really is. And like I said, I was hooked after 2017. So we're headed west on I-10 at sunrise tomorrow morning. And we'll be in Texas Monday for totality. The weather doesn't look all that great, but the heck with it. I'll try to find some sun. And if I don't, it'll st still turn pitch dark at the totality. And I'll, I'll wait, or, or my daughter will at least, for the next one in 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, in terms of totality, how long are we talking about here? Is this going to be a marathon or a sprint? Like, can we be outside for a while? If I blink, am I going to miss this thing? Yeah, it's kind of a middle-of-the-road eclipse. In totality, it'll be as long as four to five minutes, which is relatively long for eclipses and about double of the last one in 2017. For Jacksonville, the most uh, part of the sun that's covered in uh, greatest amount at about 65%, 64% to be exact, will be at 3.05 p.m., and that 64% is literally just a few minutes. And you oh, will not God. notice it. Uh, the difference between totality and partial is night and day no pun intended again there either uh you won't notice any dark any change in the darkness or anything over our area uh but you will certainly be able to see it just don't you look at it obviously with your naked eye make sure you've got some kind of eyewear protection uh sunglasses typically are not enough uh but make sure you're careful there but it's okay to be outside the pets will be okay outside there's a lot of weird stuff out there on social media especially about this eclipse it's it's not anything dangerous it's a spectacle it's a it's an astronomical um, wonder that is pretty cool to see. I know you have to get to an event. Uh, Mike Burrish with us talking about uh, the eclipse coming up Monday, which obviously has captured the attention of so many around uh, around the country and here in Florida as well. we got a big event coming on UNF, a watch party. Action News Jacks will be there uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. So if you're looking for more of an event-type feel, uh, here it is at the amphitheater over there on the campus of the University of North Florida. Uh, and our First Alert weather team will be there too. So uh, that should be fun, kind of a hangout party on Monday afternoon. By the way, a lot of schools will have excused absences um, mm -hmm. in in the area because of the eclipse because I think a lot of it is they they're not going to provide glasses or anybody it's not going to be a science experiment or, or experience uh, for schools and so they're given the option 
I think, uh, to to have excused absences, I think, in some spots, if I heard that correctly. But yeah. you just said something that's pretty interesting, Mike. Like I think more of the myths that are around this. Mm-hmm. And just a very, a very simple question, too, for me is, like, why can't you look at it? Well, you can't look at the sun any time. It's not any different than any other time, really. You're not going to look directly at the sun. The problem is when it's partially eclipsed, it, it that uh, the rays of the sun are actually a little more focused than they typically are. So that lends it to be even a little bit potentially more dangerous. But you would have to look at it for, for a while, which is hard to do without eye protection and proper sure. eye protection in particular. So uh, we we're especially concerned about young kids that may not understand that concept. I would think yeah. the average adult, we hope, would understand that concept uh, that, um, you know, you don't look directly at the sun. But when it's a little bit eclipsed, there is a little bit more focused, technically, those rays of the sun. And um, we will be giving out uh, solar eclipse glasses free, 5,000 of them, at that solar eclipse watch party at UNF. So that's pretty cool. And um, there are all kinds of ways to view it safely. You can take a shoebox, for example, and... Um, and put a hole, a pinhole in one side, put another hole in the other side, and just let the sun go through that pinhole. You look in the box, and you can see the projection on the box. You can take a funnel from the kitchen, uh, an everyday funnel that you might use for liquid. Let poke, uh, let that uh, shine through the um, little end of the funnel. It'll project out onto the concrete and show you the, the eclipsed sun. So there are a lot of easy, cheap, fun ways to, to make it work. You can put a little pinhole in a piece of paper. It's that easy uh, to, wow. to project the to project the sun. But yeah, you don't want to look at it directly. But it's otherwise safe to be outside. It's not any more lethal the sun, so to speak, than it usually is. You should always have sunscreen in Florida, of course, on anyway. Uh, pets are going to be okay. Uh, but that's a good question and a good point. At actionnewsjacks.com/eclipse, we have a lot of that information, including myth busters, if you will, maps, graphics, all that good stuff. Yeah, Barsh cool. Blog, you can find it there on ActionNewsShacks.com. Yeah. That's where Barsh. you find the Action Sports Shacks 24-7 network as well. Uh, Barsh, thanks for taking a few minutes, man. Hit them well thanks. on the golf course today for a good cause. Yeah, for Basca, uh, that's an organization that does a lot of work for um, both young uh, children and adults that have uh, learning disabilities. You guys, they do amazing work. Maybe next year we can get you guys out there uh, because this is a great golf tournament. And uh, these people that are working um, with these um, youngsters and the adults with disabilities, uh, gosh, they're angels walking around on earth. I mean, they do some amazing work for some amazing people. It's a great cause. So thanks. We'll be out there this afternoon. And um, I don't know that I'll hit them well, but I'll hit them. And then I'll yeah. MC the, uh, we'll MC the dinner and, and, and raise some more money. So it'll be good.